Let's install this switch panel on the Jeep. Thanks, Oxbeam. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am here with Chris in Chris's garage, of course. And today we are installing this Oxbeam switch panel on my Jeep. These switch panels are super dope. They have on and off switches and it connects into your car with just this and one cable. And you can put any of these stickers over the buttons. That way you know exactly what buttons for what. And the white pieces on the sticker, they actually light up either blue or green depending on what you order and under the engine bay you connect every accessory that you have onto this panel here and from this panel you get the signal wire that goes to this switch every time you click something it gives it power through here and it turns on the item that you choose so if that wasn't confusing enough let's go ahead and install it and for the mounting location i'm gonna ask you guys on instagram see what you guys think if you're not following me there yet follow me at nadra off-road so you can participate in these polls and help build the jeep but for you guys on youtube right now I actually want to put a name to my Jeep. I just don't know what to go with. So I want to ask you guys, comment down below a name that you think goes good with my Jeep. So the top three names, they get the most likes in the comment section below. On the next video, I will post those three names and let you guys choose the final name for the Jeep. The main things that you have are the fuse box, which is going to go in the engine bay, the cables that connect to the battery, and then this is the signal wire that goes to your switches. So I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of mock this up, see what way is the best to get into the car. From what I can see on the driver's side, there's the rubber grommet right here that we can go into. And I think that's going to be our best bet, but I'm just going to look around, see what works best for me, and then I'll let you guys know what works. And on the inside, I think I'm going to put the switch panel in here. I'm going to have to modify it, that way it closes and opens, but I kind of want it hidden, that way I can have it closed and you won't be able to tell. Another good place to put it, I think it, it would be like around here, but I don't want it exposed, so that'll be my best bet. So I was trying to find the easiest way that we could set this up without having to drill through the firewall like using existing entry points. The only one we could really find is on that side. And for that, we'd have to extend like the power wires and do a bunch of stuff. So I think the easiest way that we are going to go about it is we're gonna put the fuse block on top of the fuses here. So it'd be really accessible to add new accessories. It'll be on top of this and the communication wire from that will go through the fender inside. It'll go through here into like the door boot right here. And that way it's not gonna get pinched. Nothing's gonna happen to it. It'll be inside the car and I'd have enough slack to run it where I need to. That cable is about like six and a half feet, so it's not too long. The power cables are like a foot long, so that's pretty short as well. And then you also have the accessory wire on there. So we're gonna add in, add a fuse into this thing so we can connect the accessory wire to it. That way it turns off with the key. All this for the Gobi lights, we are gonna hide underneath the coolant right here. That way you can't see anything and it'll just be the fuse block on top of this. So let's go ahead and get started. So the communication wire, we are running through the fender. So it's gonna come out over here. Right there, we're gonna zip tie it onto that bracket and underneath there is the rubber boot for the door panel. So we're gonna cut a little slit into that, run it through there. So we have just enough slack to make it to the ashtray where I wanna put the buttons. Now that we got that pretty much settled, we are going to work on mounting this up and hiding these wires here. The kit also comes with some heat shrink. So when you put the cables on this thing, you can cover it up with heat shrink. That way you're not shorting anything out. So the fuse box does require accessory switch power. That way it turns on the unit. And what we do here is included in the package is a, a add a fuse. So we took the fuse out for the injectors. We stuck it in there, 15. So that's going to have like a regular fuse. But you're also getting power for the switch through this one up here, through the add a fuse. All right, so there we go. We got our wire here. So we can go ahead and connect the red one to that. So now let's close that up for now. And we're going to go ahead and mount that on top. So I'm going to take off this panel here so we can modify it and put the switch panel in there. So to take it out, I usually just open this and just pull it out. And yeah disconnect everything and we'll do the work inside to get the switch panel onto this piece here i am not going to recommend this but this is how i'm doing it to make it work i'm using two of the mounts this one i bent and then this one i'm going to have to bend these tabs in as well or break them off in the middle i use some self tapper screws i should definitely cut these just so it's not a hazard here's the ashtray part and on top right here is a metal piece i removed that on the back on the back side there's two screws so this thing is now going to sit right above here it's going to mount up down there with some self tappers as well and then it should all work so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you the finished product all right so i'm doing a test fit check this out i love how it came out so everything looks stock obviously i don't have the pencil in but check this out it opens up i can put all the pressure that i need to press the button down it's fine and it closes back up 
no problem. And I love how it's hidden, so anyone looks in the Jeep, it looks normal, and it, that's right there. Obviously, I'm not gonna have this coin thing anymore, but I don't think that's a big deal. I usually pay with card anyway, so that's it. So time to keep running all the wires, connect it to power, and then test it out at the end. But let me show you how I mounted it as well. So this is what it looks like all together. So I actually used two mounts, and don't make fun of me. I know this is not the best thing to do to mount stuff, but it's the way I did it. So I used one bracket there, and I self-tap this bracket here. I need to cut those for sure. I mean, no one's gonna stick their hand in there, so I don't think it's a big deal, but it'd be better if I cut it. Now down here, I put one on the bottom, and I missed my hole for the top one, so I put two on the side that holds it together, and it's like down the middle. And that works, like it's holding it good. Nothing binds up or anything, so it's good to go there. I'm gonna continue running the wire through the back over here, zip tie it all together, and yeah. Anyways, here is the finished product on the inside. I try to clean this up just to make it look presentable to you guys. But there we go, opens, closes. All the buttons obviously work. <clears throat> we just have to wire it to the battery. I ran all the wire underneath the, the passenger footwell, so everything looks nice and clean. Let's go ahead and finish this up. So I went ahead and took the coolant reservoir off. I put all the Govi stuff underneath it, kind of just like a wire tuck, so everything's hidden. Here I have the Govi connected to the 10 amp. Why are you taking that? So I put it on there, so I didn't lose it. Oh. Yeah, right, that was on mine. No way. Bullshit, that was already on there. I, Why are you stealing this. it? It's from this. Yeah, right. It's from this. That wasn't here when you took that apart. I put it in there. Yeah, sure. Anyways, <laughs> you use zip ties, not no, I had that. I had to use that there. <laughs> so, anyways, I put a screw on the back right here. On the front, I'm not gonna put a screw because it'll just go straight into the fuse, and I don't want that. So, what I will do though is I will put I'm gonna go pick up some double sided tape, put some on there. That way, this doesn't move. I'm gonna tighten these down. In the kit, you do get some heat shrink, so put that on before you bolt this down. The heat shrink is gonna go over that, and then with like a with the heat gun, that'll tighten everything up, and it'll make it so that these contacts can't, you know, touch anything. After that, I will run. It comes with this fuse. I'm gonna stick the fuse right here. I already have a fuse uh, from the Big Seven kit from Jeep Cable, so I'm gonna put the other fuse hidden right here, and then this cable will go here. The negative will go over here, and that's pretty much it for the install. All right, so everything is on the battery now. Everything is tight. Got a lot of corrosion. We gotta spray that down again. Anyways, it's time to test this out. I still need to shrink these down, but I'll do that after we test it. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on, I guess. All right, before we start it, go get the fire extinguisher, dude. There comes Chris with the fire extinguisher. Just in case, just in case. All right, all right, all right. All right. Oh, there we go. Since it's on the injectors, I guess it doesn't turn on until you press it all the way. Off, on. Oh, that's freaking sick. So I'm guessing this one will turn on the goey lights. So let's see. Are the lights on? Oh yeah, they actually did turn on. Press the press the third button on top. I know it's not mounted. I have to screw it in. Yep, it works, dude. Hell yeah, that's sick. I love that. And I got blue since everything else on my Jeep is blue too. So that's actually really cool. And we can hide it. It looks like stuck. So this is what it looks like once it's on and closed. There is a metal piece that we took out, and I think that's what blocks the light. But since it's not there, you can see it a little bit once it's on, but it's not too bad. And then you press it, it opens up, it's all lit up. I still need to put the stickers on top, but I'm going to wait till I get more accessories. That way I know exactly where to put the stuff. I just don't want to do that just yet. I know that this turns on my uh, rock lights, so that's cool. It looks really nice and sleek. It looks like it's part of the Jeep, like that's how it came from factory. Um, I think if you put it here, it'd be a good place too, but I really like it down there. It's too windy outside, so I'm going to end the video here. I hope this helped you guys install the unit if you decided to get the same one. I have the A-Gang. There's one that's six buttons as well. Um, that would probably be a little bit easier to fit in there. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please share with a friend. We are trying to hit 10K by the end of the year. And when we do hit 10K, I'm going to give away a lift kit or some wheels, depending on what the winner chooses. So let's get there so we can do the giveaway already. So I appreciate you guys for watching. If you watch to the end, remember to comment down a name for the Jeep or like another name that you see in the comment sections that you do like. And we'll choose the name for my Jeep. So anyways, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.